Hello everyone, I hope you're doing well. So in today's video, we're going to be doing something a little bit different uh, compared to what I usually post on this channel. Today we're going to do a ramble, not review, which I'll get into it in a second, but a ramble about uh, Star Wars Revenge of the Sith, uh, the novelization of the film by Matthew Stover. Um, Okay, so the reason I said this is a ramble and not a review is because I made this video because uh, not a lot of people in my life really like Star Wars. Like, my friends um, are into, like, geeky things, but Star Wars isn't really their thing. So I can't scream about this book or even the movie to anybody, really. So I thought I would just, like, use the internet as, like, a void to scream into instead. Um, but yeah, it's not going to be, like, a structured review like you'd the way you see other booktubers do because I don't know I just my feelings just can't be structured right now and they're so good at it and they put like different categories they talk about characters and plot and stuff like that that's we're we're not gonna do that we're just gonna yell <laughs> about this book um for a while so if you want to hear that if you're in the mood to hear me talk about my love then uh just keep on watching Okay, so before we actually get into the spoiler section, spoiler warning, I'm going to be talking about all the Star Wars prequels, the movies, um, when discussing this book, I will be completely spoiling this book itself, and I will probably also talk about the original Star Wars, in case that's a spoiler for you if you've never seen them, um, so if you're okay with me spoiling that, then just keep on watching, but if you don't want to be spoiled, then maybe this isn't the video for you, but... I highly recommend you go watch the movies. I also highly recommend this book if you're just into Star Wars in general. This book was really, really good. Um, but yeah, if you don't want to be spoiled, go watch them and then you can come back and watch this after. <laughs> All right, so this book. Oh my God. Okay, um, so I watched the movies first uh, before I read this. This wasn't like my first um, go around at the storyline. And I really liked the movies on their own. I'm just gonna say they're my favorite Star Wars like trilogy. I love the prequels much more than I do the originals, that's for sure. The sequels are like up there, but um, the last movie kind of ruined it for me. But the prequels are my favorite. I love Anakin and Obi-Wan and Padme. I loved all the characters and I just recently rewatched them, um, which is what has like reignited my love for them and encouraged me to pick this up. But this book is like a completely different experience. I loved the like in-depth view we get into the character's mindset and their thoughts of what's happening during the events that you see in the movie. And I know they always say that the book is better than the movie, but like this is so much better than the movie because you get those in-depth thoughts. Um, I mean, as you know, Revenge of the Sith is really Anakin's descent into becoming Darth Vader. And like just being able to see how that happens in his view because of the movie. I mean, you do get it in the movie, um, but it does happen a bit faster because they have to condense it into two hours. And to get the like raw like feelings that happened in this book was just so heart wrenching. Good, but heart wrenching. Um, so yeah, Anakin's descent was really great. I love how like the entire time he's comparing himself to like a like, like a, he has this like metaphor where he's like hiding the dragon inside and I love how it plays out throughout the entire book. Like you can see in the beginning how he's trying to suppress it and then he like lets it out at the end. Really loved that metaphor. I loved Anakin in general in this um, book. Continuing with Anakin, I just, I loved the peak we got into his character in this novel like especially i think one of the really telling scenes that you don't get in the movie is when he's killing about to kill count dooku and palpatine is like really like egging him on like he doesn't really do that as much in the movie but in this book he's basically almost like forcing anakin to kill him and really like manipulating him the manipulation in the book is much more apparent than it is in the movie and i loved I love to see that and I also like to see how he like weaves in and out of the dark side throughout this whole thing because he doesn't really do that in the movie like he doesn't feel as much as remorse as he does in the book like you can really see when he's killing Dooku the like dark side take over him as Palpatine is telling him to do it and then the minute he does it he like feels complete remorse and he knows that he shouldn't have done that and he goes back to the light almost and it's just it's so 
interesting to see because you can tell more so here that he like was really forced to turn dark um, completely dark in a way that you don't really get in the movie it's especially interesting to see how exhausted he was like he mentions multiple times before that scene in Palpatine's office when he officially becomes Darth Vader um, how tired he is how exhausted he is how he just wants this whole thing to end and like I think that you can clearly tell that his like mental state like his weakened mental state at that point is really what helps Palpatine drive him over the edge like if Anakin was thinking clearly and being himself like he probably wouldn't have done what he had to do um another fantastic part of that scene in the chancellor's office is when he's going to kill mace and he basically says or like the book says it's like it's the jedi order or padme like the way it's constructed you can really clearly tell that anakin feels like he has no other choice like he has to kill mace in order to save padme and i think it's done so well like his only motivation in the book at this point is Padme like his only thing is to save her whereas in the movie I find that they they switch it a bit too fast like he goes from like saying oh Padme and then he goes into like no wait I wanted power which doesn't really happen in this book it's mostly just I want Padme I want to keep Padme safe that's all I want another interesting aspect and the last thing I'm gonna ramble about about the Chancellor scene is the fact that Anakin clearly regrets doing it like right after he's really conflicted about having killed mace and or you know cutting off his hand and then palpatine killing him and he he really regrets it and you can tell that there's remorse and he wants to take it back he wants to go back to the jedi and palpatine like just forces him into turning dark and by manipulating him again but it's just <laughs> the character development or like insight in this is just so good it's so good to see i loved it anyways yeah um kind of last thing on anakin i think it's super interesting to see especially at the end here where he views palpatine as a villain still which is crazy because you don't get that in the in the movie like he near the end there when he's talking um about like you know taking over the empire with padme and things like that he's in his head he's like Palpatine's gonna die I have to kill Palpatine for what he made me do and that's just another added layer that's so so cool and so interesting and I really really loved next up we're gonna talk about the ever so tragic Obi-Wan Kenobi Obi-Wan Kenobi man in this book I just okay I'm gonna be honest here when I was watching the movies I was mostly like an Anakin <laughs> person as you can tell but this book made me appreciate obi-wan so much more it's just it's heartbreaking what happens to him there's this passage at the beginning that's basically talking about like how great of a fighter he is and how respected he is and he, like what kind of a leader he is and i think it's just it's so nice because it's so true there's also this scene with the jedi council where they're like okay well we have to send our best warrior to kill Grievous and then Obi-Wan's like okay well who are we gonna send and then they're all looking at him because he's their best warrior and he doesn't know it and he's so humble and kind and I just I love it I love him a lot um also I don't know if you know this I mean it's not in this book but I think it's in another Star Wars book where they, he goes to a fortune teller or something and you know he asks her what's his destiny and she says that he's destined for infinite sadness anyways it's fine we're fine it's fine <laughs> another part about obi-wan that i loved in this book is you can see how much more conflicted he is about anakin because the whole time you know jedi aren't supposed to form attachments and that's anakin's problem you can tell that that's anakin's problem and obi-wan always tells him to control his emotions and his anger but obi-wan loves anakin and he's not well he is afraid to say it but he's not afraid to feel it and think it in this book and it's just so i mean heartwarming and like heart-wrenching at the same time you can tell that he really thinks of him as a brother and like <laughs> really loves him and he's not supposed to but he does and it's just it's so sad um it's especially sad as we know near the end when obi-wan is reviewing the security tapes of anakin 
killing the younglings and then you know turning dark where he says he tells yoda he's like i wish i had died in order 66 like i wish they had killed me so i don't have to face this reality of anakin turning dark and i think that just blew my mind because obi-wan you know went through a bunch of stuff in the clone wars went through an entire war right at this point and had just seen uh, order 66 being put out seen all these jedi die and he never lost hope because that's who he is but he's like nothing overtook him like he was still positive he was still upbeat but then the minute he learns that anakin turned dark he was like i wish i had died i wish they had killed me and if that doesn't break your heart then i just i, I don't know what will i really i really don't there's also this really really great scene that's kind of in the movie but it's expanded on in here when they ask anakin to spy on palpatine and obi-wan just tells them and like you can feel the remorse that he knows that it's a mistake he knows that it is the biggest mistake that they will commit asking anakin to do that and i feel like he almost he obviously doesn't know what's coming but he knows that something has been broken and i think that's such an important dimension to their relationship the fact that obi-wan knows him that well and he knows that this will crush him like it just it just showcases their relationship in a more in-depth way that again you don't get in the movie um and it was just nice to see i guess i don't know i appreciated the foreshadowing if you want to be more technical because it was just really really sad i will say though uh, my last note about Obi-Wan, I do disagree with the way Matt um, kind of like worded the Mustafar scene. So he basically says that Obi-Wan didn't kill Anakin um, because it would be a mercy and like Anakin isn't deserving of mercy. And I never really got that vibe in the movie, even in the book, because I mean, he tells Yoda right before this that he won't kill Anakin, like he can't kill Anakin. And so I always took it as like, he he still can't do it. Like he can't, like I mean, he dismembered his best friend, but he can't go on with actually killing him, um, which is how I took it. And I think that the narrative supports that. So I don't really get or agree with um, Stover saying it was too merciful, like killing him would be too much of a mercy. Like I think Obi-Wan has enough good in him left that he just couldn't kill his best friend which is just my take on it um yeah that's kind of like the one thing where i really didn't like in this book uh but everything else about obi-wan was so good he makes me so sad and even at the end the fact that he still has hope and he still takes care of luke um which we see in the original uh trilogy is just heartbreaking this book is heartbreaking <laughs> okay the last um kind of like major thing I wanted to talk about are the Jedi. So there's a really interesting part in this novel where Ob uh, not Obi -Wan, Yoda admits to knowing that the Jedi were wrong in the way that they handled everything. And I think that's really, really important because you don't get that in the movie. Like in the movie, the Jedi are still like upheld as this great, you know, force and order and they are, but they also made a bunch of mistakes. And Yoda kind of acknowledges this, and I think that's really insightful. Like, you know, the Jedi did make mistakes. They did treat Anakin badly. I mean, it doesn't justify, you know, <laughs> the people he killed after and the kids he kills after. But um, I thought it was really important to bring that up. And Matthew did it in such a great way. Like, especially Yoda, who goes on to train Luke, right? Like, to be able to pass that on, the fact that, you know, attachments aren't... The worst thing ever they shouldn't have been hiding and repressing so much like they should have been more open about it and i think that was really great it also brings an interesting like this book brings an interesting dynamic to the light versus dark aspect because we see anakin like right at the end um you see anakin like as darth vader and he's kind of telling himself like he realizes that the dark side isn't there to save other people it's only like a selfish um means and like it almost plays a trick on you because you're just left alone like you're just there with your own selfish tendencies that don't ever help anybody else which is tragic but so good so good okay one last thing because i forgot but like i said this is a ramble so there's no narrative structure the best part of this book is like there's this whole section as obi-wan is going to kill grievous where 
Matthew is saying, like, this is how you set up a Jedi trap. And he's basically, you know, going through what Grievous has done for Obi-Wan, kind of. And so he's saying, you know, like, you take them away, you isolate them from the rest of the crew, and you bring them to this off-world planet super far away, and you make sure this and this, and you're like, oh, okay, cool, cool. And then the whole chapter goes through, Obi-Wan kills Grievous, it's all done. And then by the end of it, at this point, also in the narrative, Anakin is with Palpatine about to kill Mace and turn dark. And then at the end of the chapter, he basically goes, this is how Obi-Wan walked into a Jedi trap and said it. And it's referring to the fact that because Obi-Wan was alone in Offworld and Pal Palpatine took him away from Anakin, that's how he got Anakin to turn dark. Because as we know, if Obi-Wan had been with him, Anakin probably wouldn't have turned, right? He would have... Because he's also sitting there in his office saying, I want Obi-Wan, where's Obi-Wan? I need to talk to him. And he's not there because Palpatine set a trap. And it's just the way he describes it is just like ridiculous. Like when I read that, I gasped out loud. It was just so sad and so good. And just this book is so wonderful. Anyways, those were all my thoughts. Sad and depressing and heart rate wrenching as they were. Um... As you can probably tell, I really love this book, which is a bit surprising because, I mean, okay, no offense to the artist, but the cover is just not pretty, and it's also the novelization of a movie, so I don't know, I did, didn't have high expectations, but this, like, blew them out of the water. I'm probably going to read more of them, to be honest with you, because they were that good um, to kind of get, get that insight on uh, different Star Wars movies. But yes, 10 out of 10, highly recommend, especially, especially if you're into the prequels. This book is like a must at this point now. It was so good. Um, yeah, so those are all my rambly thoughts on this book. Thank you for listening to them if you got this far. Um, and tell me, let me know if you want to see more things like this. I could do more things like this um, if you're into that. If you aren't, I have a bunch of other videos on my channel that you could go see. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.